Well, welcome partnership investors, uh, regional members, and members of the press. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for anyone um, who does not know me, my name is Jay Byers, and I am president and CEO of the Greater Des Moines Partnership. Um, in a typical year, the partnership spends a few months at the start of the new congressional session drafting our federal policy agenda, which is then presented um, as part of our May DMDC trip to Washington, D.C. However, with uh, DMDC moving to the fall this year, our efforts have shifted, uh, but we've continued uh, to advance our advocacy work throughout this time, and you'll hear more about these efforts uh, later in the program. Uh, before I turn it over to our Government Policy Council Chair, uh, Matt Amon, I would like to personally thank him, our Government Policy Council, and all of our members and investors who have been engaged in the drafting of our 2021 uh, federal policy agenda, and also thanking, I would like to thank uh, Andrea and Ryan from our team for their leadership as well. The partnership's work on behalf of the DSM region would not be possible without the time and expertise of all of you who contribute to the determining of the needs of our community. I'd now like to invite Matt Amon, Assistant Vice President of Government Relations with the Principal Financial Group and the 2021 Partnership Government Policy Council Chair to share more about the process of developing our 2021 federal policy agenda. Thanks again. Thanks, Jay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Jay mentioned, uh, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to put together that agenda. You know, this year, the process was led by Anna Lee Kelly, who's Director of Government Affairs at Mid-American Energy and myself. Uh, more importantly, we divided up the work on the agenda into three buckets or working groups, and, and that's where uh, the rubber really hits the road. Uh, the Economic Development Work Group was led by Billy Hunt from America's Cultivation Corridor and Anna Lee. Uh, the Community Development Working Group was led by Ruth Randleman from Carlisle and Stacey Williams of ISG, and Talent Development with Sue Hopper from DMU and Greg Nichols from Iowa Student Loan. I uh, wanna extend a huge thanks to uh, those folks, those co-chairs uh, who are really responsible for organizing the meetings. Uh, hopefully we'll be in person again next year. This was all done virtually uh, because this is, this is where you, you literally get the, the document uh, busted up into sections, people redlining, uh, people looking at old priorities that need to be taken out, uh, new things that need to be put in. Uh, so in addition to thanking them, also like to make a pitch, and I think Andrew will make it later, uh, to members and investors, if you can make time for your folks to be on these working groups, I think it's really important. It's uh, an opportunity for organizations to make sure their priorities are heard uh, by the partnership. And you know, we're going to dial this down to you know, five or six key priorities, but you know, that agenda uh, turns out to be about you know, 40 pages. So the way the work groups uh, kind of shook it out is that we had some group meetings where we heard from speakers, but then they would go into sort of the corner, if you will, virtual corner, uh, exchange emails, work on that content, uh, ultimately coming up with the feedback then goes to the partnership staff to, to sort of herd all those cats and get those into a document uh, that we can use with the delegation. And as Jay mentioned, any normal year, I think the way it uh, typically would work is we sort of work through that process first quarter, get it approved by the exec committee in April, and then be out to DC in May. Compliments of COVID, uh, that trip is now scheduled for September 22nd with the 24th. Uh, 24th. Uh, please do register. I was uh, just talking to uh, our team in DC and it sounds like DC is opening up uh, even more quickly than I think they expected. So uh, really looking forward to that where we get to uh, go out and get in front of the delegation there uh, as well as spend time with each other, uh, kind of the, uh, the fruits of the labor in terms of putting together the agenda. Um, before I kick it to folks, uh, to uh, you know, representatives of, of some members to go through the priorities, just want to quickly highlight those bullets for you. Um, so for the 2021 federal policy agenda, some of these are going to seem very familiar to you, or they should. Uh, the first one is the Des Moines International Airport Terminal Project. The second is Central Iowa Water Trails. The third is infrastructure investment. Fourth is small business support. And the fourth is immigration reform. So with this, I'd like to turn it over to Curtie Levy, who's going to take you through the 
first bullet, and she is managing director of TechStars, as well as a board member at the airport. And with that, Curry, take us away. All right, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, the airport terminal is not a new priority for the partnership or the airport. Um, and as the country continues to rebound following the global pandemic, the return to travel is happening faster than we ever imagined back in 2020. Um, for example, in May of 2021, the airport reported reaching 72% of pre-pandemic travel numbers, and the first few weeks of June show passenger numbers are 80% of pre-pandemic numbers. The infrastructure challenges that we faced as our employments grew to nearly 3 million passengers in 2019 will return with the influx of passengers making the need for the terminal increasingly important. Um, specifically, the partnership supports the Des Moines International Airport's terminal concept plan to create an airport that keeps up with Iowa's growing corporate aviation and commercial passenger demand. The airport has about $644 million of annual economic impact on the state of Iowa, making the terminal project important not only for our region, but also for the state. The partnership believes that the, uh, as the current terminal facility comes to an end of its useful economic life, that it is imperative to invest in a facility and space that accommodates Des Moines economic growth and allows the flexibility that the airport will need in the future. The overall, the overall project is uh, a total of about $500 million and will largely be completed by 2023, leaving only the design and construction of the terminal facility at, at an estimated cost of $240 million. The funding shortfall remains around $200 million. And while the new facility will offer an improved travel experience for Iowans, the most significant advantage will be the modernized gate system, allowing for larger aircraft to park at the gates and enabling continued air service growth that positively impacts our community. Um, the partnership has continued to support the airport's efforts to close the existing funding gap. They have supported our application for community project funding through the US House of Appropriations process. And they've also supported an increase to the passenger facility charge. These revenue streams, in addition to federal funding programs available to the airport, if secured, will ensure the airport's terminal program comes to programming plan comes to fruition. A new facility will enable continue economic growth by accommodating a rapidly changing and growing community that utilizes the airport for their business and leisure travel more and more each year. We are so grateful for the partnership support and look forward to working together again this year. And I'm now gonna turn it over to Catherine Kuhner, Vice President, Economic Connections and Integration for Mid-American Energy Company and co-chair of the Central <coughs> Iowa Hospitals. Thank you, Curdy. It's my pleasure to be here to represent the Central Iowa Water Trails. And I am gonna visit with you about the next priority that's featured here. Uh, with the partnership and that is the Central Iowa Water Trails project. And as you've probably heard, and this is most often referenced as the most transformational project of our lifetime, positively affecting generations to come. And this initiative is all about connecting Central Iowans with their river routes by providing additional recreational opportunities in and along our waterways. And as we know, outdoor recreation is incredibly important. And this Central Iowa Water Trails project is creating the synergy needed to also collaborate and generate momentum around our water quality and environmental conservation. And more specifically, the partnership supports building a regional connected system of natural resource areas and corridors to support this project. The region has been working on this project since the spring of 2018. And our business and community leaders from around DSM unveiled an ambitious plan uh, to bring recreation to the downtown DSM rivers and create a network of more than 150 miles of water trails across the regions. I think it has about 86 access points. So there's nobody uh, that won't be able to access this uh, river uh, system depending on where they're at. And it's gonna be activated along the way. And so as one of the many organizations working on the, uh, this project, the partnership views this as the primary pathway to success as a public private investment. 
And with just under 25 million in private dollars from individuals and businesses already committed, the partnership supports allocating adequate and permanent funding sources to meet the infrastructure needs of this project, which are many. And so funding options include partnering with federal agencies, nonprofits, and other granting authorities to make this project a reality, which is well on its way. So a true collaboration of entities in this region, the project has received, I think many of you have heard, uh, the $25 million bill grant in 2019, uh, and that is through the Des Moines MPO uh, with obviously much support from the county. Uh, Polk County is just stepping up and doing obviously a lot of work on that as well as along with the other partners. Um, so this really did serve as the catalyst for the project and it's enabling work already in four of our downtown DSM sites to con begin construction in, in 2022. And so in the coming year and beyond, the partnership will work with the Central Iowa Water Trails and regional partners to continue advocating to Iowa's federal delegation for funding from existing programs and creating uh, new opportunities. So with that, it is my pleasure uh, to turn it over to our Polk County Supervisor, Angela Conley, who will cover our infrastructure in this in uh, investment. So over to you, Angela. Thanks, Catherine. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I wish we were in person, but soon we will be. Uh, I hope to uh, highlight the partnership's next featured priority, which is the broad topic of infrastructure investment. And that's for sure what we've heard in the news a lot, infrastructure. Uh, Long-term area of focus, the partnership believes reliable and well-maintained infrastructure is imperative to a strong business climate and growing economy. Utilizing the federal proposed investment during the pandemic recovery provides an opportunity to accelerate and support communities that we all know have long maintenance needs. When we talk about infrastructure, the full agenda includes everything from water infrastructure, sometimes just what uh, Catherine just talked about, aviation, what Curdy just talked about, and to digital and energy infrastructure. Today, I want to highlight two focus areas. Each year, the Des Moines Area MPO helps develop a list of federal transportation and trail project asks, which is incorporated into the full agenda. Highlighting one of those projects is a Southeast connector, which would complete the four lane ML King Parkway from downtown Des Moines to US 65. The partnership is supporting the 2021 raise grant application to complete that project. Second is broadband. Not only is a central Iowa broadband initiative, a strategic priority of the partnership, but this is consistently brought up as a top need for business, healthcare, education, and beyond. Ensuring strong broadband infrastructure to support the upload download speeds needed for today's economy is crucial. We heard a lot about that during COVID the last 18 months. Whether it's flood mitigation or public transportation, investing in infrastructure that benefits Iowa businesses and Iowans alike these types of projects provide the foundation for strong communities and allow for economic development efforts that grow the Iowa economy. Next, we will have Karen Kuhn, Assistant Vice President for Nationwide and the next 2021 Chair for the Partnerships Business Resources and Community Development Board, who's gonna cover small business support. Thank you, Angela. Small business is the backbone of the American economy and the federal government should help drive innovation and create more jobs. Because small business ownership is the path to prosperity for many Americans, small and disadvantaged businesses should be nurtured. Small business employs 50% of all private sector employees and have generated 60 to 80% of net new jobs annually during the last decade, according to the U.S. Small Business Administration, better known as the SBA. Since the start of the global pandemic, the SBA has played a key role in assisting with the survival and the recovery of the small business ecosystem. 
The programs developed and expanded to support business during the pandemic should continue to see flexibility as the recovery continues. The partnership supports continued funding for the SBA's effort to provide technical and financial assistance and access to capital for small businesses. For the Office of Small Business Development Center Network, the Manufacturing Extension Program, Small Business Investment Company Program, Minority Business Development Agency, and the State Small Business Credit Initiative. Further, the partnership supports streamlining the government procurement process and increasing business opportunities for the private sector in the federal market. Next, I'd like to turn it to Tej Dewan, Strategic Initiative Officer for, for, for the Principal Financial Group. Thank you, Karen. Uh, thank you all for, for being here and listening to this. Uh, as you know, the partnership has long been an advocate for com comprehensive immigration reform. I'm grateful to have been involved right alongside the partnership for nearly the last decade. Um, however, this year, uh, like many things, the global pandemic highlighted the further need for reforming uh, the uh, reforming immigration uh, to address the increasing need for talent in Iowa. Uh, travel restrictions uh, related to COVID-19 uh, have served to make how critical foreign nationals are to Iowa and the country. Uh, you don't need to look far. Uh, looking at campuses shows the decreases in international student enrollment are negatively impacting Iowa's colleges and universities already. Uh, step your foot on any of those campuses and you'll see the impact. Uh, and that impact is, it goes beyond Iowa. It goes to all US higher education of all colleges, all shape sizes, um, coast to coast. So the partnership, uh, along with more than 30 other businesses, education, community leaders across the state, uh, will continue to support the Iowa Compact on Immigration. And this compact calls for bipartisan immigration policy reforms that ensure that the federal system meets the needs of employers and the labor market and provides a permanent solution for undocumented Iowans who make significant contributions to the state's economy. Specifically, the partnership supports the following to be incorporated into a modernized immigration system. Some of these are not new. <laughs> they, I, I, I've, I've seen them. Uh, well over the last decade. And the first and foremost is support of the full and rapid reopening of consulates and embassies worldwide, the closure of which negatively impacts Iowa's economy and institutions of higher education. That's where travel begins to the US, right? The consulates and embassies. Uh, the second is the expansion of the H-1B visa program, uh, which creates a clear path for foreign born entrepreneurs to create businesses in the US and hire US workers. A third is an increase of the H-2B visa program cap to realistically account for the needs in agriculture and construction industries and an expansion of the employment-based immigrant visa program. Next, modernizing the immigration system through dual intent for international students who become productive members of our workforce and entrepreneurs around the country. Creating a temporary visa program for workers to fill essential non-professional roles for which US workers are not available and not just limited to seasonal jobs. Passage of the DREAM Act, which provides legal status for young people who were brought to this country as children, who've grown up as Americans and now face an uncertain future. And finally, funding of the Office of Refugee Resettlement and passage of the J1 Conrad 30 and Physician Access Reauthorization Act. Finally, to us Iowans, this is not a surprise, but it is important. Uh, the partnership, partnership sees Iowa, continues to see Iowa. Its multi-decade commitment to be a welcoming state and supports policies that further the goals of a diverse and inclusive population. 